business back in the Phoenix area. Not exactly sure if my wife is tuned in, but I sent her a link. She's probably still uh, she's probably still cleaning horse stalls. Good for her. <laughs> Not exactly sure what the rest of the country is experiencing as far as weather goes, but right here in Victorville, California, up in the high desert, right at the top of the Cajon Pass, looking kind of, I guess you could say, basically looking down on Riverside, say, um, perfect weather. Did I just say that? Perfect weather in Southern California. Barely, it might be 70, but I'm not exactly sure. But, man, I've been looking forward to the day of seeing sweaters and flannel shirts, uh, on people in Southern California and no more 100 degree weather, no more 110 degree weather. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. So to the, to the uh, north and east of us, I'm looking at the high desert mountains of going towards the Las Vegas direction, right off the side of Highway 15. Uh, more desert mountains to the right of us, which would be south. And Victorville, we're directly behind, right on the edge of Victorville at the fairgrounds here. And what a cool facility. It really, really is. Yeah. We're trying to figure out. Huh? Who, what? Yeah, loud music. Maybe it's in. Too loud or not? No music. And here comes our next race to come across the uh, start finish line to trip the scoring and timing line. Travis Jones and Jacob Hanger round up on row two. Luke Berry and Drew Salgado are third and fourth. Row three in the area alongside Brixton Wirt. In row four, Samuel Cut and Brody Glaze outside of him in the ice belt. And the Celt there again. I guess if you're going to race in America, you're going to race as many damn times you possibly can. Wow. Dexter Warren is starting in that ninth spot in the final spot online. The young man from uh, Australia. From down under. Yeah. Good on, my mate. I am so glad he didn't know I was going to be here. I, I messaged them a couple weeks ago and asked if they were be heading to the Midwest. I asked if they were going to Crandon as much as they wanted to. I guess he, I think if I remember right, he was running for a championship in the uh, work series and couldn't, it happened to be on the same weekend or something like that. But I never thought about asking if they were coming here. Well, I they showed up. Because <laughs> I'm going to make you eat the Vegemite this time. I ain't <laughs> No. I don't care if there's a song about that easy crap. I, I ain't opening up that can. It didn't smell. It's, it, it's a Vegemite. I don't care. You explain it to me all you want, but no. It had a really funky smell. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't do smells. Unless it's a grilled ribeye or... Or your goats. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like the uh, Pace UTV is going to pull off. Old Glory and all the batteries flying on that beautiful Polaris there and the Opto Batters green flag is coming out, Scott. Wait, wait, wait. Green is out. We're underway. As they, basically the same car that we saw the prior race, except much, much younger. Well, I should say much younger. But much, younger. much, much, much. <laughs> and we're getting live drone footage going through turn one. Wait, what? Something. Dexter's not having major issues. He's well off the pace. And he's pulling a young man from Las Vegas, uh, from Australia. Something. 
I saw something pull off the track. He pulled off the track, but something yeah. was rolling alongside of him. Oh, it could be uh, it was a loose about, wheel? You, no, it was about this big around and black. Like, I don't know if they have bearings of some kind or what, but no, tough break for... Uh, Chupacabra? Yeah. <laughs> We're in the night. We are in Victorville. So, just about ready to complete lap number one. Again, this is the AM Ortega Junior One Cart. Class. And Travis Jones has had the lead from the Luke Berry. Drew Salgado, one, two, and three. Justin Wirt, Jacob Hanger, round up the top six. And it looks like, yeah, Dexter Warren's day is done <sighs> very early. Well, that was another day and another round. It was so. It was funny when we had him up in the booth at, at uh, talking about Dexter Warren, our young driver from Australia. All the even the older ladies were like looking back at us uh, up in the booth, wondering who was talking. And he's good to have. He has he has such a dreamy accent. Yeah, dreamy, dreamy he's voice. Even the voice you didn't see him. Yeah. Just amazing to see how strong this class is. What, 16 years later? Oh, yeah. June 2 is just yeah. huge, too. So it's, it's awesome to see. Just tells me how strong, you know, first off-road, another resurgence. It's been a wave. It's been up and down. Hey, take an inventory of the drivers in NASCAR right now. Oh, yeah, I know. We, 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 we know a few. Jeez. We, we've, we've watched those little young drivers uh, up in this off-road sport. But going back to Jimmy Johnson, you know, I mean, he was an off-road racer. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about this class in particular. No, why not? Drivers that came from this class. And now we have them move up all the way through the program. Yeah. Are you, are you referring to uh, possibly a Sheldon Creed, a Haley Deegan, mm -hmm. uh, Zane Smith? Uh, <laughs> oh, how about a few Herbs kids? <laughs> Riley? Yeah, I saw him uh, a couple weeks ago in Las Vegas, and he ain't a little kid anymore. I know. I just mean, I remember him as a little squirrel, <laughs> like belt buckle tall, little skinny, maybe 50 pounds, maybe. Well, Travis Jones out front, the 285, coming down across the strap one more time. Luke Berry in pursuit here with Drew Salgado, Jacob Hanger, Chase Berry, the top five. Yeah, look at this onboard shot here, Brody Glaze. That is amazing. A live onboard camera shot. I don't, that, that's, that's so damn cool. Technology. You know, and I, I only bring up the drivers in a NASCAR right now that we know of that came from this is because the kids on the track on the track right now, whether they know it or not, they've got a shot at doing the same damn thing. They got yep. a shot at it. So if if what half a dozen drivers that are in NASCAR right now, which there is legitimately at least six, maybe seven or more, that came from this class, yep. um, can do it. Dang, there's no reason why any kid that's out there on the track on the track can't. I think you were talking to a few of them this morning down there that have aspirations like that. Pam Hall, one of the Ultra Four announcing cr crew, is just checked in. Hey, Pam. Hi, Pam. So Connor Berry must be back in the pits watching. <laughs> yeah, I kind of called him out already. <laughs> hey, I mean, how cool is this? You can sit in your motorhome, getting ready for your next race, chilling out, looking at the lines on the track. Going, hmm, I see what he did there. Looks like Jacob Hanger's making a move now from fourth to third. He has. So Jacob has moved up one spot. And he's not getting followed by the drone he's getting mugged by it that drone is like right oh yeah our cameras are right on top of the action that thing is literally yeah and look at this bumper to bumper to bumper through that final corner getting a little squirrely oh all the way around and you know what you can't fault third place car for that because this luke berry had gotten in the back of travis luke had to check up so travis wouldn't go all the way around and it was just a chain reaction after that but now the cars are all gapped. Oh, we get right at the comp yellow even. Yep. So comp caution has come out. Halfway through the race, they uh, regroup them, re-rack them, restack them, and then we're going to refire them. It's the race within the race, I always like to say. So you may not have got the best start on the first part of it. This gives you a second chance and a run. And it always keeps the racing exciting. 
You know, it really, really does. And, you know, there's some old school race fans that think this is just not the way, you know, nah, nah, nah. you know what? Well, way back in 2006, the end of 2006 season, I think it was, Jim Baldwin said, this is what we're going to do. There is pretty much 95% of the fans and the racers went, here we go again. Jim Baldwin <laughs> doing his shit. Trying right? to reinvent the wheel. And wow. It, for like two races, there was still skepticism, but by the end of the season, you know, I think the old man's got something going on here. <laughs> well, I mean, if you get a case where somebody's just running away, it becomes a boring race and, you know, people don't want to watch. But if you can keep that those battles going on, you're going to hold the interest. And, and boy, epic battles have ensued. Well, not only that, but it adds a degree, a very high degree of strategy. Yes. You know, how do you set this yep. truck up? Because the race always starts out muddy, always starts out slick, and almost always ends up dry and slick even more. Um, but it's where do you want your truck to be the fastest? You know, what's the first half or second half? And no one plays that game better than Johnny Green. <laughs> and he's got it figured out. And early on in uh, the core days, back way back when. But I love this shot right here. Brody Glaze, man. Look at the vision. I think he's a tear off. I was going to say, what are those tear offs? Dude, he's got your tear offs. He's got a few on there, I think, still. Saving him until he absolutely has to. So Travis Jones has the point. The red car, Luke Berry in second. But boy, he's leaning all over the back bumper. Now watch as he go in the corner. Will he still lay on that bumper and kind of push him around a little bit? Oh, squirrely coming out. Good shot running back there, a little bit deeper there. But the, the oftentimes, back. Dave, I would love to be sitting next to, invisible, of course, yeah. sitting next to the spotter, their dad, usually most of the time, and just listen to what dad is saying. Oh, definitely the spotting area can get interesting. <laughs> but but I'd want to be invisible yeah. because I don't want him to change his mannerisms <laughs> if he knew I was standing there. Absolutely. Well, coming by one more time, it's Jones, Barry. And look at that, Chase Berry. Jacob Hanger back in fourth place with Brixton Wirt now. Samuel Gibbs. Then you got Brody Glaze, who we were just on board with, seeing that shot. Still hasn't pulled a uh, tear off yet. I don't know how he's seen. Now, oop, little contact going into the corner. Wrote turn number two. Still able to bumper to bumper, first through fourth. A little bit of a gap, about 10 cars. 10 truck links back to fifth. Only one driver's in the 52nd bracket. And that's our leader, Travis Jones. Nobody else is even close. Maybe some of the low 57s, but uh, yeah, Travis Jones in the league all his own right now in lap times. Well, he did that the first half of the race and it looked like he's trying to repeat it again. And look at that drone right over the top of the 236 machine of Luke Berry. Back on board with Brody Glaze. Yeah, Brody Glaze is running right now, running that seventh spot, but I'm like watching Brixton work right now. Running in the top five. He's got a little bit of a gap to make up to get back into the mix of things, but uh, you know, you learn things as well when you're running by yourself as compared to being in traffic. Had a lot of drivers I've talked to. I said, it's easy, it, you know, it's a lot easier to run out front than to run in the middle of the pack to work your way forward. But it's no fun. But it's no fun. <laughs> oh, big roll oh, multiple no. times. Is that word? Yeah, it looks like they came the rubber side down. Yeah, I think that was Brixton. Where the 241? Let's see, is that who it is? Yeah. Yep. I ain't mentioning his name ever again because I don't want mom and grandma to come up here beating on me. You know? Oh, the old announcer's jinx. Ugh. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> White flag is out. One more time around for all the boys and girls out there on the course. The man first through fourth, all evenly gapped back to fourth. Maybe two car lengths, truck lengths between each. So I'm not too sure if there's going to be any swap of position before they cross that line. One turn remaining in this race. Travis Jones making that run there. See if anything can happen. Oh, a little bit of out of shape there for third place. 
chase, but uh, looks like uh, Jacob Hanger had some problems. So look at that, Travis Jones, Luke Berry, and Chase Berry, the Berry boys, on the box. Jacob Hager will uh, hang out in that fourth spot. Let's see who's coming around for the top five. And it looks like it's going to be Drew Salgado. Brody Clay's not very far behind him as Brixton Wirt. Samuel Gibbs will round out the, uh, our finishers. Tough break for Dexter Warren this afternoon as he only made it around for one turn before something yeah. broke on that cart. But once again, we're going to send Dave down trackside, talk to our top three finishers in the AM Ortega Junior One Cart Division race. And in the meantime, let's step aside for all our fans back at home. A little few words from our sponsors, and we'll see Dave in just a moment. You don't even have a, a, a scheduled events, do you? No. Usually I get sheets in. Yeah. You don't even have a lineup, thank I God. Know. I know. It's usually I have a lineup with sponsors on the phone. Oh, he pulled the tear off. Yeah. Whoever turned it up, I turned it down. I'm yeah. sure that I hope. Check, 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 check. Mike three. Which one is it? Oh boy. <laughs> one, two, three. Two? Did he want? I don't know. Yeah, that's what he wants. Okay. Oh no, that's David. Thank <laughs> you. 
Check, 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 check. 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 Mike two. Mike two. Mike two. Check, check. Second mic. One, two, three, two. Check, 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 check. There we go. Bingo. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and bring up the kids up here. Let's get Chase uh, Barry, Luke Barry, and Travis Jones. Come on up, boys. Turn down a little bit. She's a little hot. All right. Let's go ahead and start this with, can we turn it down just a little bit? Thank you. Just a little, there we go. Thank you. All right, Chase. Hey, <laughs> that was a little bit of a wait, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to start you off with a little gift skip it there to Mountain High. Get you started in uh, this winter program. But uh, still a little bit of the summer in us, and we're still racing off-road. You just had a great race out there and uh, get to share with, uh, let's see, the man over on the other side there. You got second and third in the family. So pretty cool. Tell me about your race. It was crazy. I didn't really think I was going to spin anyone out. I just felt like they came up on me because I was trying to make a clean pass. But Rubbing's racing, right? Yeah. <laughs> So did you have fun out on the track? Yeah. What was your favorite moment? Um, when I was third. Third? Well, of course, you're on the box, right? Do you want to thank some people, but Chase? Yeah. I want to thank my mom, my dad, uh, Rugged, the boat guy, uh, Straight Edge, and MBRC Construction. Give it up for Chase Berry, third place, everybody. And talk about keeping the family. You're going to move it on to Luke. and. Uh, how about you get that same mountain high pass to go in? That means you can go anytime because it says no blackout date, so it's pretty cool. So you're going to go do some uh, snowboarding up there? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I can see that look on your face. So tell me about the race there because we talked to Chase. Now it's your turn to tell your story what went on. Well, the first five laps, Travis was just zooming. I could not catch up to him. And then when we did the restart, I was kind of keeping up with him, following his lines, and then holding up against Chase. Uh, I know. It's like, how's the ride? Well, tomorrow, you know he's coming for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be a little bit smack-talking uh, back in the pit tonight? I might. <laughs> Who do you want to thank for being up here, buddy? i like to thank my mom, my dad, Straight Edge, the boat guy, and MRC's construction. Good job, look, look, Jay, very awesome job, I gotta say, and uh, wham, mountain high pass for you, Travis Jones. And, I mean, you get to ski, you get to get chocolate milk, you got the top of the box. How can your day get better? I don't know. <laughs> so let's talk about this race a little bit. Uh, you jumped out early on, the beginning of the race, before the comp caution, then the comp caution came out, then you had a whole lot of company behind you. It was very intense. I was just the whole time hoping that they wouldn't catch me and that my line that I found out earlier today on the track walk would work. So you just kept on hitting your marks, right? Yeah. Well, I got to say, awesome job. And uh, I think it's time to thank some people. I'd like to thank my family, my, my sister, Catherine Jones, my spotter, G&J, Concept Powder Coating, CarTech, Torco, and everybody that supported me and sponsoring me give it up for travis jones everybody good job there for sure and again give it up for chase berry luke berry and travis jones standing tall on the top of the box and how about that all these kids are going to mountain high so cool back to you scott